Hi everybody, today we're going to look at Anna Krumka's recolouring of the, the mythical and unicorn-like Keishobu Tarot from 1973. The amazing thing about this tarot was it's the first ever Japanese Japanese designed, Japanese produced tarot pack and, and it's a brilliant design project. It is a fusion of Marseille and Rider Waite Smith and I've done a quick flip through of this a couple of weeks back. Now I want to tell you my thoughts about this deck and and um, also about the recolouring. There's a great video about the original Keishobu by Melissa Zupan, and I will give you a link to that. What you need to know about Anna's recolouring, which is available on, on Make Playing Cards, which is what I have here, is that she's actually got three versions available. There was there were four available a month back, but there's now three. There's there's this one which I've got here, the recoloured version, as a kind of distressed recolored version and then there's really um, what I would call a sort of a facsimile, a restored version of the original. Now the original is everyone's blonde, the skies are all white um, and it's a very limited color palette and the recolored version gives some, some brown and black skin colors and brings in different hair colors and importantly changes the colors of the skies. Now I chose to get the recolored version and I actually regret it. I think the, the, the unrecolored version is more to the point. As I've already complained in my flip through video, um, the cards don't really come with packaging. My set that I bought came with a plain white box and I, as you see I have just uh, focused photocopied a couple of cards and, and glued them onto the box because who wants a white box in one's tarot drawer? I also want to say that um, there's another great video online by Masha. The, the, the account's called Musings by Masha. Again, I will give you that reference below. And what Masha does is she actually shows you the three main versions that, that Anna has done. The recolored, the, the, the distressed recolored, and the unrecolored, just restored version. And I think that that video is is really brilliant, and it'll help you to decide which one you want. Mm -hmm. The original clearly is is fantastically interesting from a number of points of view. Let's just look at just the full card here, and, and I won't talk about every single card. I have a flip through already out there. But with this full card, you see a fairly you feel like you're in the world of Marseille, but you're also in the 70s. This is 1973, actually, not not 74, as I said. And because we're in the 70s, we've zoomed in slightly because we're in the, the golden age of cinema. We've zoomed in. So so the cards are kind of like slightly busting out of their frames. And that's very charming. One also notices here in terms of production that in Anna's bridge-sized version, the designs don't fit the card shape fantastically well. I think looking at um, Masha's video, if you buy the full tarot version, the, the inner box fits the shape of the card better. So I'll show you the Major Arcana because the Major Arcana is, is the best thing about this recolored version. Um, I, I, I agonized about which version to buy because I'm not terribly um, well off at the moment. And it's, it's not super expensive. It's worth every penny. But, you know, once you've had it sent from America, it's going to cost you 50 euros or something. And um, now that I've got the whole deck and I'm looking at it, I think I was very excited by Anna's decision to colour in the night scenes with a dark colour here. She's gone for a brown. I thought that looked terribly stylish. As I say, I regret buying the recoloured version now because I think um, it all looks much better with white skies. And so, as I say, this major arcana is, I think, the best bit of this version of the deck. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the dark skies um, give it a, a more you know, super contemporary feel. But I do have something to say about that. I'm not quite sure whether, you know, if you're looking, if you're excited about the 1973 Keishobu Tarot from Japan, then you're excited about the 1973 Keishobu Tarot from Japan. And that's likely to, and that's likely to be one's main excitement. And, you know, recolouring it is also fun, but first one wants to get one's hands on the original and one will never get one's hands on the original because it's so expensive now. It's very rare. So one really wants a facsimile, um, which this 
isn't. As you can see, there's, there's red hair already. So let's go into, into batons and you'll see what I mean. She's already started to, to colour in the skies. And it, it looks chic, ladies and gentlemen, but, but is it the Keishobu? Is it, is it 70s Japan? For example, look, here's the, here are the four suits. So here we have batons, we have a beige background, which I suppose you could say is a kind of green. There for swords we have a blue, very nice too. And there we have a pink, and there we have a yellow. They're tasteful colours, slightly dirty colours, and I mean that in just purely in a technical sense. They've got a bit of grey in them, and it's all fine. But I wish it was white at the moment. Still, let's go through these, and I'll, I will allow myself uh, the occasional comment. Um... Because everything's zoomed in, she has, well, she, the original designer, whoever that may be, and, and it's a bit clouded in mystery, has had to reduce the amount of figures in some of these cards. There isn't room for five people in the five of Batten, so we've just got two. There isn't, there isn't really room for the, the following victorious army in the six. And it's, it's very near Rider right Waite Smith, isn't it? But not all the details are there, that the bandage isn't there. Um, it's great that the, 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 the pages have gone back to being called Jacks. I'm interested at the moment in, in the Rider Waite Smith, and I'm also slightly interested in what happened before that. I don't want to go all the way back to Marseille, but I'm interested in, in what Waite and Smith did and whether any of their decisions should be reversed. And certainly Jacks. A jack is a more mature person than a page. These pages are a bit androgynous, which I think is completely deliberate by, by Wade and Smith. They wanted androgynous figures for the jacks, but um, it means that the jacks lose their connection with traditional mythological figures. So here we have, have the cups. I, I love the eccentricity of, of some of this design here. That, um, that's the most fabulous lion. And again, the, the, the three ladies in the, the three of um, cups really crammed in there. I also noticed that the, the designer, maybe because he or she is designing Western faces here, seems not really to differentiate very clearly between male and female. Uh, it, it, it feels like most of the faces are male or androgynous. It feels like the designer didn't really have a very strong feeling for designing the, the, the female Western face, the female European face. I mean, that's the, that's the couple in, in the Ten of Cups. You know, a fairly female, that lady there. But let's just show you the lovers here. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that's the lovers. Now, I'm in a male couple. And um, for me, that's, that's fantastic because it looks like a man choosing between his mother and his boyfriend. Um, so it's absolutely fine for me, but it, it's an eccentricity, isn't it? It's a, it's something that one does notice about this deck. Ten, and then a nice jack. So you definitely see um, a Waitsmith influence there. The court cards on the whole are, I mean, I think um, the the Waitsmith court cards are very are one of the best bits of the deck. And so with these, one does really go back to pre-RWS court card style. They're not really quite so suggestive as the RWS ones. Um, but, but RWS details have been sort of like sneaked in, you see, in the, in the King of Cups there. We, they, they, they've sneaked in the fish, haven't they? And they, they, they popped the fish in there. So we're still holding on to right away at Smith imagery as much as possible but not all of it because there isn't room for all of it in this zoomed in world i mean i i got this because i'm i'm fed up with the rider weight smith major arcana and i'm particularly fed up with the rider weight smith uh, lovers card now this is very interesting that as you can see is the four of swords and i think it was I think it was Melissa Zupan who explained why this Four of Swords is not like Rider Waite Smith. Um, it's because in Japan, the, the word for four sounds a bit like the word for death. So if you had someone lying down and it said four, uh, that would basically turn it into a death card. So that was 
So the designers of the of the Keishobu looked around for an alternative solution. Now here we have the Sheridan Douglas deck from 71 and it, it had just come out. And Alfred Douglas is a, he's an originator, he's Golden Dawn trained, he's from that lineage. So his deck, it's a bit like the, the BOTA deck. It has a lot of similarities with the Rider Waite Smith, but it goes its own way in about, I don't know, 50% of the pip cards. So here we have the Sheridan Douglas Four of Swords. And um, it's people, it's soldiers playing a chess, taking a rest from the battle and having a game of chess. That's what the uh, the Keishobu has gone as an alternative Four of Swords, a rest and relaxation image, which doesn't scare the Japanese too much. A seven. And the, the, the six, he hasn't got his back turned and his family aren't with him. Uh, if it was any other deck, I would make some sort of disapproving remark about that but I'm so into I'm so into this deck here with the H you, you don't see the city in the background you don't see the mud on the feet so you lose stuff but you get a real a refreshing you get what what can I say a sort of the graphic world has been refreshed and made sleeker and a bit nicer because I mean Pamela is a great genius but she she had her limitations Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, you have an alternative Queen of Swords here. You have a Kali card, you can choose between the two. Um, I won't be using the Kali card. I, I think it's a bit strange to put um, a deity in the Minor Arcana. I, I think you could have slipped Kali into the Major Arcana if that was your bag. Um, I know Anna is into Kali, um, but um, for me, I, I won't be using that one. Even though I think it's it's a lovely bit of design and it's Clearly an original um, drawing on the face. I understand that Anna has slightly also um, redrawn some of the faces because they looked a bit too grumpy, apparently, in the original. So here are the pentacles. That's very nice, isn't it? Two, three, the four. I like the way it's zoomed in and, and you, you lose bits of it. The six, the figure's just visible with the hands. The seven, the eight. And as people have pointed out, I mean, that, that's meant to be a, a lady. Looks like a, looks a bit like a bloke to me. And as people have pointed out, when we get to the 10 here, in, in some ways it's, it's a better organized graphic solution than Pamela's 10, which is quite a mishmash. Pamela tends to tended to cram information into her cards, which is why they're so valuable, you know, as as, as divination cards. But it, it sometimes does seem a little bit crowded, and here everything's there, everything's visible, and it's a bit more relaxed. There we have a nice Jack. There's some concession to the to the body language of the Rider Waite Smith. The knight. The Queen, no bunny for the Queen, but we, you know, I mean, if you know the RWS well enough, you can you can supply all those images in your mind as you read. And the King, you know, no grapes for the King, but we know who he is, don't we? And here we have a blank card, which isn't blank. I would say, please, Anna, we, we like blank cards, but I need it to be blank. It has something written on it. I can be anything you want me to be. So, yes, I think... I'm going to buy the other one, the facsimile one. I, I, and I'll tell you a story why. I, I'm, a, I'm a writer and, a, and I had a, a kind of screenwriting career at one stage. And um, a lady, a female producer, commissioned me to write a screenplay of a novel. And the novel was called Fag Hag. And, you know, I mean, a fag hag is, is a sort of term of abuse to uh, uh, about a woman who hang, hangs around gay men. And there are lots of implications about this. You know, can't she get a boyfriend of her own? Why is she investing so much in this relationship with this gay man? Is she in love with him? All these questions get brought up by that term fag hag. And sure enough, in this novel, it was about this woman who had low self-esteem. She didn't like her body shape. And she had a, a brilliant, sexy, gay male best friend. And she was a fag hag. And that the novel was called Fag Hag. And I was hired and paid to write a screenplay version of this novel, Fag Hag. And this I did. And 
you know, then you, you have a production meeting and the producer lady said to me, um, yeah, it, it, I, I like the script very much, but couldn't she be less of a fag hag? You know, this woman in this story, she's got low self-esteem. She's doesn't look very attractive. She's a bit screwed up and she's a fag hag and she's hanging around this gay man in a pathetic way. Couldn't she be less of a fag hag? And I, I, I said, but you know, the novel's called Fag Hag, and you've you've paid money to take out an option on this novel to turn it into a film, and you've paid me to write a screenplay, and now you don't want it to be about a fag hag. And I slightly feel like that about this deck, in that the reason why I'm interested in it is that I was looking for a hybrid between the Rider Waite Smith and the Marseille which this is, and that's very rare. There's one more modern one which has come out in the past two years, which looks horrible. This looks fantastic. So I'm incredibly thrilled that the Japanese, you know, produced something in the 70s that, that, that fits the bill. And I mean, as speaking as a customer, speaking as the, um, the audience for this deck, that's why I would buy it. And I got distracted by the recoloration and I, I sort of got overexcited and I, I thought, oh, blue and pink skies, what's not to like? And now that it's arrived in the post, I realise I don't want it. I want the Keishobu Tarot. I think it's brilliant that Anna has restored it and made it available to us. I'm very thankful for that. I think it's also fantastic that she's offered choice. Um, but for my personal taste... I'm going to get myself a copy of the unrecolored version. So there we go. I'll put some I'll put some links in the notes below. Tell me what you think. I I do advise you to to snaffle up a copy of this, any of the, the three versions. Card stock's okay. It's make playing cards card stock. It's not not fantastic. That the back is sort of inappropriate. Um, I think. But, you know, the backs of tarot cards are almost always inappropriate, so one wouldn't really sort of make a fuss about that. Um, let's not talk about the back. So um, thanks for listening, everybody. Give me your thoughts. Lots of love and see you when I see you. Bye. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like to consider subscribing to my channel. It makes a difference. Thank you.